Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to introduce calibration, talk a little bit about color profiles and I have to warn you this opens up a whole can of worms but this is a really important first step and I'm going to give you a vital tip about your camera's LCD screen. Okay, so if you have been shooting for a little while, you've invested some money in cameras and lenses and maybe your computer and stuff as well, whether you're printing files or just editing them to put on to Facebook or whatever you're using the files for, if you do something with them after you've finished shooting them, then you really, really, really should be using a calibrated screen. It sounds like one of those, oh, that's something for studios and professionals that I don't need to worry about, but it's, I think, absolutely vital. If you've spent money on your camera equipment, you need to know that what you're seeing is actually what's in the file. If you then, if you're using a screen that's way off and then you send it to someone with a calibrated screen, they're not going to see what you edited. It's that simple. To give you a little idea, um, what's the best place to explain this? So, white balance. You know, if you get the idea that if you are shooting something in daylight, it's going to look one way, but if you use the same settings but you shoot in under tungsten light or fluorescent light, there's going to be a color cast on the shot. What that is doing is basically shifting, putting that green or that orange from the light source and shifting all of your colors into that direction because it's adding that color to the whole shot. So taking a look at this, imagine this big area is the full color spectrum, all the colors in the world. So our eye can see pretty much all of that. There's probably others that birds and stuff can see too, right? But let's just assume that's the full spectrum. Then in here, here are two different um, areas. This bigger one is Adobe RGB, and the smaller one is sRGB. Now, I think it's hard to see there, but I think sRGB extends a little bit further into the reds. Adobe is a bigger color space. sRGB is a more, it, it has all of the punchy area, so that's why it's great to use on web and that kind of thing. If you see right here in the middle, there's kind of white, and from out of that you go out to blue, out to red, out to green. Makes sense, right? So if you're shooting uh, in a fluorescent room, so there's an ugly, nasty green shadow cast coming into your shot, it's kind of pushing everything towards the green, so your triangle gets pushed in that direction. So you know if you're shooting on your camera, to adjust your white balance or take a custom reading so it says, okay, no, that isn't white, this isn't white, white should be over here, so let's shift everything back, and then you get it right. The same is true when you're working on your monitor. All monitors are different. Even a $5,000 studio editing monitor comes out of the box imperfect because you need to judge it based on the light that you're editing in in the room you need to let the monitor warm up. You know, as they warm up, the colors change slightly. And then over time, they will change as well. The panels, you know, change and it, it all just changes. So you need to actually go through and use a system that will measure, okay, I'm, the computer's video card is telling the screen, show me perfect blue, for example. And then it will use a spectrometer, one of these things. I'm using the Spider 4 series. This is the Elite setup, it's actually the same unit for Elite and for um, the Pro version. It's just the software that's different. But so this is able to read color really, really accurately. So the monitor will show, here's 33233 blue or whatever. This will read it and say, actually what you're showing me has a little bit of yellow in it. So let's try again and adjust it. Okay, now here's perfect red. Okay, that's got a little bit of this in it. And it goes through and it basically rewrites the entire map. So when your file is saying, show this range of colors, and then your computer says, well, I know my video card and my screen show that a bit wrong. So I'm going to remap all of that so that when it does come out, what the user is actually seeing is what's actually in the file. I promise you this really opens a huge can of worms because then you need to make sure your printer is properly calibrated and it will depend on what light the shots are going to be looked at under, and all different things like that. But today I want to show you what it actually does to, what it actually does to calibrate. So I've got the Spider Force here, so I'm actually going to let it run through and do a full test for you uh, live. And I'm using ScreenFlow, so hopefully this will work, and you'll see what it's actually doing. 
Okay, step by step, let's just use the assistant. It's really quite um, intuitive. I've done this once before, so we're just gonna recalibrate it and use the recommended settings. This is all stuff that we'll get to in future episodes. I'm actually gonna get an absolute calibration master to give us uh, their thoughts and talk us through and take answers of questions. So leave me your questions that you have for them. So you can see on screen there, the spider comes with a little docking station. You pop it in there and it will read the ambient light in the room to judge how much there is and what's going on. So that tells you, okay, your brightness and white point. Now I know from memory, I need my screen around this level of brightness to be right. So we're gonna accept that. And then you can see it's saying place the spider here. So it's got a weighted back that you can hang over your screen. Try not to cover the camera so you can still see me though. Um, sorry, just want to make sure I get this all right. Okay, so I've put the spectrometer right on that spot and I'm going to say next. Now it goes through and it's going to show all of these different colors and it's going to measure it and say, is this white? No, it's a bit of this. Is this, is this, is this? And then it's going to come through and tell you. So first of all, it's doing the luminance. So it's going to say, how bright is the screen? And it'll get me to make an adjustment to that first off. Then it will go through and do the colors. And when we're talking about that, luminance is really important, how bright your screen is. Nearly all DSLRs let you adjust the brightness of your rear LCD screen. If you don't go to the trouble of calibrating your computer monitor, which I really suggest you do, then at least put your file beside your screen, sorry, your computer screen beside your camera screen, and just look at the brightness. If you're not using histogram all the time, if your camera screen is too bright or too dark, you might be looking at your shots thinking, oh, that's overexposed or underexposed, but actually it's not. Then when you get back to your computer, it doesn't match. So at least try and match them up. So here we go. It's saying the target is 120 brightness, and at the moment I'm at 122.6. Now the, the MacBook Pro doesn't have a huge range of settings, so I'm right within the bandwidth, but I'll just show you. I'm pretty sure if I go down one level and then get it to uh, retest it, that I'm gonna be way too dark. So I'll probably have to go with 122. So let's see. Yeah, so 100, so that's way too dark. So let's pop it back up one, take another reading. Okay, so vary just a little bit there. And then let's continue. So now it's gonna run through and do all of the different colors there for you to make sure that everything is looking right. Now I'll let this kind of fast forward so you can see all the different colors that it runs through and then I'll come back. Okay, so we're getting towards the end now. You wanna make sure your computer screen isn't going to be set to dull down if there's no activity going on and make sure no programs jump up because if something jumped up in front of the sensor, then it's gonna to totally throw the measurements off. So you can see it looks like it's almost done. It says that it's done. Please remove your spider and click finish. So here I go taking it off. Now this is gonna show us something really cool. So let's show, you give it a name for the profile, retina, home and then the date so it's may 2013 now this and set your recalibration reminder that's great one month save and then it's going to show us something really cool different monitors obviously have different amount of colors they can show accurately so whether you're using one that shows heaps of colors or not many it's still best that the colors they show are accurate but on this next one let me show you People kind of carry on a little bit about how great the retina display is. So first of all, let's have a look. This is the calibrated view, and this is how it would be without it. So hopefully that's coming through that it's a much warmer and more natural looking display once I use the calibrated view. So let's move on. Now this is cool. So this is showing us how much of the color spectrum it's able to show. So you can see my monitor is showing 97% of the sRGB range. Not bad. Let's just move this over so you can see everything properly. Okay, but if we look at the Adobe RGB, Adobe RGB is the purple and my retina display is the red, it's only 73%, so not great. And then let's have a look at 
when I calibrated the Wacom Cintiq 24 inch HD, that's not their top of the line one. But look at this one compared to Adobe RGB. It covers 96% of Adobe RGB and more than 100% of sRGB. So a huge comparison there. If we put both of them on, you can see the different size of the color spectrum a higher quality display is able to show. So if you're into editing your shots, whether it's for web or for print or for any other purpose, try and calibrate your monitor. The spider ones are really intuitive. They do work well. They cost from about a hundred bucks for the entry one to a couple of hundred bucks for the pro ones that give you a lot more features and profiles and you can set all different Kelvin settings. This really is such a tricky area and I understand the basic to intermediates of it and my I've got my screen calibrated and I use a calibrated printer and all of that kind of thing. But there's a lot to it. So if you do have specific questions about calibrating this or printers or how you match things or how you work out the different light settings in rooms and how that affects printing and looking on screen, fire away, I'll gather up all the questions and I'm going to sit down with an absolute expert on calibration sometime in the next month or two and do a, a Q&A video for you guys. I hope you found that helpful. Leave me any questions or comments. I'll see you soon.